What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today we're going to be breaking down the Hinder XM18. Uh, now I've already got done a couple of things but I'm going to go over that uh, uh, with you guys here kind of my setup and, and what I prefer to do. Um, by the way there was no upload yesterday because again my voice is, is uh, not, uh, not doing so great uh, so I hope I'm not too obnoxious today I'm kind of raspy uh, but yesterday I just there was no way to talk and I was coughing and I didn't want to try and stumble through a video um, but anyways uh, we're not going to be breaking down the knife that I um, that I recently got from the pawn shop because it's got red Loctite on it and I don't feel like messing up the pivot but I do need to swap the uh, scale the original G10 scale back onto my XM18 um, so I'm going to do that today. I, I think uh, I think that'll be entertaining and at the same time I can kind of demonstrate how I like to do this because I've, I've done it so many times that I've got a very particular process. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show that here real quick. Now I've got the pivot partially out and the reason was is because there I, I had reapplied Loctite to this and I didn't um, want to you know sit here and stumble around that while uh, I was trying to show everybody. Now I've also got the pocket clip off whoops, the back of the XM18. And the reason is, is because you're gonna be, when you're taking a scale off the front, uh, you're gonna have it laid down on the other side and if the pocket clip is on it, then it ends up being tilted and it's awkward. The other thing that I've done here is I've taken tape, you can see the tape there on the uh, female side of the, uh, the screw housing back here on the frame lock. Uh, if you are gonna take the scale off of your XM18, there, there are gonna be times where you're gonna need to lift the knife up off the uh, whatever platform it's sitting on and if you've done that before, then you're going to know that's a mess because those uh, female ends come out and they fly all over the place and the standoffs come out and it's, uh, it's a nightmare. So uh, to prepare for that, I would definitely recommend just putting some tape on there. It, it will save you a lot of trouble. Um, now, <clears throat> if you don't have the armor's tool, you can do what I've done here, which is just cut a notch in a penny. And that will fit the spanner side of the XM18 perfectly. So I can demonstrate that. I don't know if I'm gonna if the lighting's gonna allow, but you can see there. Um, and uh, you know that num the other the other benefit to that is is that uh, you know pennies aren't copper all the way through, right? But on the outside they are copper, and copper is softer than the steel. Uh, uh, that uh, you're going to be interacting with on the hardware. So if you don't want to scratch up your hardware, if you're like me and that bothers you to see scratches or, you know, burring or a uh, nard up hardware, uh, then you can use a penny and uh, you'll never have to worry about that. I've actually taken this XM apart multiple times. I'll show you my pivot there. I've always used a penny. Never had an issue. I use the uh, Torx heads down here, but if you're careful, you won't scratch it up. So I'm very particular about that. I know other people are, so I thought I might share and give that information there. So anyways, we've got the pivot just about out, but uh, I'm gonna start the demonstration uh, from right here. So we'll go ahead and continue to back the pivot out. I think I can actually do it with my hands here. There we go. Closer look at that pivot there. By the way, I think it's also a good idea to have backup hardware for an XM18, because number one, uh, it's, it's expensive if you lose it or damage it. Um, and, uh, you know, at some point I would say there's a fairly good chance, you know, if it's your first XM18, uh, you're probably going to mess up the hardware or, you know, you might even lose a screw or something. You might as well go ahead and buy an, another set, um, or get yourself some titanium, some anodized stuff. I just feel better about having another pivot lying around and, and more, uh, handle screws, um, because I, I have slipped before and messed it up. So <coughs> anyways. Let's go ahead and take out these body screws. Now, the uh, polished parts of these screws will scratch if you get your um, Torx head in direct contact with them. So I like to kind of guide it in with my finger. Always keep all your hardware in the exact same place. I like to keep mine in the same position, so I'll go one, two, three, so I know, you know exactly which of these holes these screws went into. That's what I'm talking about here. I kind of like to guide it in with my finger. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some dead silence here while I'm taking this thing apart. That's, you know, I, I can't give uh, filler all the way through. Number two. And number three. Also give you guys a look at the newest. There we go. You can hear that clicking. This is where you got to be careful. You can scratch your blade 
because the lock bar is pushing against the blade and once you've released the tension, once you've pulled these screws out of there, there's no tension holding that plate on. So it's, it wants to rub against the frame. And to be honest with you guys, I probably should have gone ahead and deployed the blade, but I'm gonna just lift that off of there. For those of you who are curious, this is the newest generation of titanium scale and you'll see on the back here, there is the hinderer emblem or logo, but that's what these look like when they're by themselves. I find stuff like that interesting. I thought somebody else would. I wish I could get a better view of that hinderer logo there. It is, it looks like it's, might be laser engraved on there. I'm not really sure. Uh, but anyways, so you can see there, here's where we're at. Now I'm going to, ooh, ever so slowly push that back out. Check there. Ah, oh, yeah, we're good. So see, I've taped these off. So now I can li I can freely lift this up. Oh, I got the washer there. I can freely lift these off, uh, or, or lift this off, uh, without having the hardware roll all over the place. So there's a washer on the inside. Um, I'm actually going to wipe that off. Um, I run these dry. That's just what I do. Um, I don't think there's any particular need for any excess lubrication. Um, I'm going to run and get a cloth real quick, so there'll probably be a cut in this video. So we'll be right back in one sec. Okay, we're back. Uh, I knew I was going to forget something. Uh, microfiber cloth, a clean one is always a good thing to have. We're going to go ahead and just kind of rub that area down here real quick, get all that stuff out of there. There wasn't much in there, but uh, it's nice to have it out of the way. So uh, the next thing you're going to do, and you know, this is going to apply, a lot of people aren't going to be switching from a tie scale to a, uh, a liner and a G10 scale, but the same idea applies you know, when you're pulling uh, whatever it is off, the, the liner and your, your whatever color you've got and you're switching into carbon fiber or another uh, scale color or whatever. But things you've got to line up. Let's go ahead and put the washer back on there. Let's see if we can see which side. Eh, not going to be able to see it, but I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down here real quick. A lot of people might think you're crazy for running that dry, but I'm telling you, I've had better luck with XMs. I run them dry. Never had an issue there, so I'm gonna go put, put that back on. Now, things you're gonna have to line up here. Pivot, stop pin, and all three of these screws, which another added benefit of having the tape in there, it keeps them all at a uniform height since they're taped down, and the tolerances are, are very tight on this, so it's much easier to put this back on when you've got everything already in the right place. Now, the issue you're going to run into is going to be where that washer wants to sit. And this is going to be the part where I'm going to have to use a little tool, push that washer over into exactly the right place. And it's gonna be kind of a pain. This is generally the part that is difficult. You gotta be careful with these washers so you don't tear them. But you've gotta get this all down exactly right. And then the idea here is you've gotta get that female side of the pivot to go back through. I'm going to pick all this up here. Let's use something. I wonder if I've got something softer that I can push against that. 
Bear with me here one second. Yeah, of course not. Actually, nope. Not really gonna work, so we're just gonna have to work with it here. Now, if you push that lock bar out of the way, you can get the that side to want to sink in. There we go. Click, click. There we go. We got the with the Teflon washer even on all sides. Now, the trick is you got to hold this all down. You got to hold it together while you're laying your G10 scale over and then continue to apply pressure on there. First thing you want to do, get that pivot in there. Because that if you once you get that tightened down, will hold everything together and it will make it much easier if I can whoops, see, we let it slip there. There we go. Click her in. Get that pivot in because this I've had lots of XM18s just fly apart on me during this juncture and we're actually not wanting to bite. There it goes. So get that thing down quickly so that it holds the uh, scale and the liner um, into that other side. Once it starts to get tight you can of course Use whatever tool you've got. Now, you know, for those of you who have never, whoop, for those of you who have never done this before, I might have made that look complicated. And for those of you who have done this before, maybe I made it look easy. Let me tell you, I have struggled with this many a time, and it is not the easiest thing to do. You know, it, it is in some ways a simple construction and in other ways it is definitely not. There, I, I had no idea what I was doing the first time I did it and it was a nightmare. It just scared me to death because I thought I'm going to scratch this up. You know, it's going to be a mess. So anyways, now that we've got that back on there, uh, you can see here I am intentionally leaving this like this uh, with the blade out. You, you're going to want to be... In that this setup right here so we're gonna go ahead and put these in one at a time sorry if my hands are a little bit in the way just barely don't you know don't don't tighten them down all the way you do these in order oh I'm not sure if I missed that I was looking at the camera in terms of the correct order, but truthfully, whoops, truthfully, it's not going to matter because they're all exactly the same size. Okay, there's two in there, so now you know I feel okay letting this down. And I'm going to pull a chair around so that I can do this and not be bending over. <clears throat> So anyways, go ahead and put the third one in here. Slowly guide it in there with your hand. Get that down. Okay. So now we're almost done. But what inevitably will happen with your XM is the, let me make sure I'm centered here uh, on the camera. The centering of the blade will likely be off though. <laughs> Actually, it's not. But as soon as I, as soon as I see how it's, a, it's just a little bit off. I've got the pivot tightened way down, right? So we're gonna undo that just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get your blade back to center. What you're gonna want, what you're gonna need, is a piece of paper, and you're just gonna fold it multiple times. You want it to be pretty thick, but not, you know, horrendously thick. You end up with something like this. Actually, 
You might get away with half of that. We're going to tear it in half. Something about this thickness. That's about what you're looking for there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pull this blade out 90 degrees. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly before I start talking. Pull this out 90 degrees. And then you're going to tighten this all the way down. And I mean tight. And put some pressure on here. Real tight. This is why you want to use a penny for this because you will mess up that pivot screw if you're using a screwdriver or the wrong type of tool. There. You can see there we're good on the pivot. All right. Now, ooh, tight, yeah. We're gonna bring this, actually, before you bring it back down, what you wanna do is get all of these body screws loosened up a bit. Just a little bit. So that they're kind of free spinning, right? check make sure I haven't dinged the blade on anything nope blades good okay push the blade into position you're gonna take this piece of paper and wedge it in there I need to go I need the blade to go this way a little bit or I'm sorry I need the blade to as soon as I untighten this the blade is gonna to want to go that way so I need to wedge it in the opposite direction So you want to get that in there so that the blade is almost touching. Now you got to be careful here because you're used to the detent holding the blade in, but it's not. It's actually just the tightness. It's, it's the same tightness all the way through. You can't even feel the detent anymore. So when you pull this out, see I've got it touching on this side here. So if I were to pull this piece of paper out straight, like pull up on it, it'll drag the blade with it and the blade could potentially rub on the inside of the titanium and you don't want that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to force the knife to accept the tolerances of the blade being more center. That's why you release these uh, screws, right? So you're pushing it the opposite direction of the, uh, or you're pushing it in the direction that you need it to move, and then you're gonna tighten the body screws down in the hopes that it holds that position while you uh, loosen up the uh, tension of the pivot uh, to the desired action. So slowly, just get her snug, then I like to do the bottom next. Just snug. And then the middle one. I don't like to do them right beside each other. It's kind of the same idea when you're changing, you know, a tire on your car and when you're tightening the lug nuts, you don't want to do them side to side. You want to do them, you want to kind of alternate around so that you have the same amount of tightness through and through. So then you go back through and check them again. That one can go just a little bit more. This one, again, just a little bit. And this one here. The trick here is to get them tight enough that nothing will move when you pull this piece of paper out, but not so tight that it's gonna be impossible to get these out because you can strip these. Um, I've even seen the heads break. So, you know, be careful with that. You know, there's no reason. I, I used to over tighten these like crazy and I would just, it would drive me crazy to look in there and see that I had, you know, gnarred something up and I just hated that. So just, you know, little bit of torque, not a lot. Just get them even, get them comfortably in there. The screws will hold themselves in. You're not gonna have an issue with that over time. Okay, in my opinion, these are perfect. So now what we're gonna do, is you're gonna put your thumb up here where the jimping is to hold the blade down and you're gonna, cause it's gonna be real tight. You're gonna slowly pull this paper out towards the butt of the knife. And it is, yeah, there we go. That way the blade doesn't fly out of there and you don't slice your hand open or mess up your knife. So 
you can see here now, this is desirable. We are almost dead perfectly centered. It might actually be favoring this side a little bit, which is fine because as soon as I relieve some of that tension on the pivot, it's gonna pull back the other way. So the idea here now with the pivot is that you're, you are trying to get the desired action while at the same time hoping that your blade stays centered. Let's try it here. Pretty good. Still pretty tight though. Just a little bit more. That's almost too loose. <laughs> I can tell because the blade actually wanted to go back to the other side. It just takes just a little bit left and right. Oh, we are just about. Just about where we want to be. You can see there, centering. And the action, pretty good. That's about where I like it. Pretty good. I think we might actually have the desired tension, possibly just a little bit more. It's actually pretty overly smooth almost. A lot of people want it to like free fall. You don't need it to do that. You need it to be just where you can just kind of barely shake it into place, but you don't have any wrist action involved. So you can see here, that's where I like it, where I can still fire it out, but it's not so loose, you know, that it's swinging all over the place and it's not so tight that it's obnoxious. So, There is our end result on the centering there. We are right where we want to be. <clears throat> now, of course, we still got to do the backside here. So now you can, and you got to be careful if your tape folds over like mine did, because you don't want that head contacting the standoff. Just trying to lift the tape up but that's also not a good idea because you can actually run that tool into the blade and that's not what you want so we're just gonna peel it up from this side if you can get your tape pieces short enough that they don't fold over the side that is obviously a preferable way to do that okay now we will come on there guy get off of me go ahead and put the pocket clip back in be careful because that pocket clip will lay right on top of that lock bar stabilizer and if you move it around too much it can also scratch this can be a pain because these are itty bitty little screws Check your, you know, your pocket clip can move a little bit, so check and make sure that it is even in there. You know, it clicks a little bit, you can see that. Check to make sure it's even in there, meaning that everything is evenly spaced around the edges there where that um, pocket clip mounts into the frame before you put your second screw in. And just like with the handle screws, get it down fairly tight, but not crazy. Kind of go back and forth and do a little bit at a time. Too tight, and you will definitely mess these screws up. Um, not tight enough, and your pocket clip might come off, but it's unlikely. Okay. That's what we want. Just like that, that's the action that we want. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna go back a little bit. Ever so slight. 
There it is. That's what we want. You can see lockup remained nice and early. Looks to be about 25%. That's what we want. And then you want your tip to be splitting the difference on that standoff. Camera can throw things off and also the frame can throw things off because the um, lock bar is pushing in on this side so the gaps look different towards the end. But it's the tip on the standoff that you are judging for center. Oh yeah. We're good. That's what we want. So anyways, that pretty much ends the tutorial, guys. Uh, so I kind of, you know, stuttered all over the place and kind of stumbled through that. But here on the table is everything that I used to do this and everything that you could realistically need to do the same thing. So again, driver with the correct Torx head. I'm not sure exactly what, what size uh, Torx that is. I don't know if it's T8, maybe, T6. Uh, your, you need a Phillips uh, bit. Your, you know, obviously the knife and the parts. Uh, something like the armor's tool or spanner tool. And another penny for the um, uh, pivot. Your piece of paper, some tape, and a microfiber cloth. And then probably something to keep the hardware in. But in any case, that is pretty much it today, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or if you found this helpful, uh, please leave a like. <laughs> and if you'd like to check out my other content, I do have uh, both expensive and inexpensive knives that I either do or don't like and my overviews and reviews on them. So if you enjoy that content, then please subscribe to my channel. Uh, but that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.